So you mentioned that you specialize a lot in refactoring code. Maybe just a refresher for those people who may not be familiar. Could you give us a definition of what is actually refactoring? Yeah, sure. So refactoring in its purest form just means changing the code without changing what it does. That's the definition I always introduce to people. It doesn't actually have an opinion on how to use that thing. It's just saying these two pieces of code are the same. We can go from one to the other. In practice, though, we almost always have the target of actually wanting to make the code more readable, more maintainable, better to work with and something. So then we call it refactoring. And in my book, and also I think in Martin Fowler's book, he equates refactoring with making the code better in the sense of maintainability and readability. But it could also just means that we're rearranging code without changing the functionality. So that's the basic concept of it. And you relate this to what you call good code. So what does it mean by good code? Is it like code that is readable and maintainable only, or is there any other property or attribute? Well, you could have many attributes of your code that define what good is in your specific context. Some people are doing embedded systems where memory layout is really important or performance is really important. There are certainly domains where good code has different properties, but what seems to be common to most, if not all of them, is that we want our invariants to be as local as possible. Invariance is the stuff we need to keep in our heads while we're working with the software. And the more complicated they are and the further away they are from where we're looking, the more likely we're going to forget them, right? And then we're going to make mistakes and introduce errors into the system. So it seems to me, good code should be resilient to bugs. It should be difficult to make bugs and it should be easy to get started on. It should lead you in the way that it wants to go. So it's making it easier to do the kinds of changes that you want the system to make. Of course, the downside of that is that most refactoring actually also make it harder to make other changes. And so if you guess the direction wrong of the software, then it can have the negative effect. Thanks for reminding that part, because sometimes a lot of developers are into, yeah, let's refactor, let's refactor, make it better. But it turns out that the design becomes more complex. The code actually becomes less readable. And also it's not easy to make further change. A lot of times, actually engineers love to refactor. They think the code will be better, but is there any decision point where you think we should think about doing refactoring? Like what's the purpose of refactoring? It's very linked to how well you're able to predict the future of your software. I always say that if you're experimenting a lot, if you have something you're testing, you don't really know what's going to happen to it. Don't refactor it. Don't make it super nice. Don't spend that time because you don't know yet if it's valuable. Validate the business case first and then do the refactoring. In the same way, if you have something that's end of life soon or sunsetting, don't spend time refactoring that, making it nice because it's not going to survive for long enough for it to pay off. All the refactoring should pay for itself in terms of easier maintenance and cheaper maintenance in the future and fewer bugs at higher quality. Also. A lot of times we associate when we do refactoring is to actually add more tests, adding more automated tests, unit tests, whichever test that is, because to refactor and not changing the actual intention of the code, the functionality itself, sometimes it's tricky, right? And we want to have a fail safe mechanism to say that, okay, we have a test here. We refactor and proves that the code actually still behaves as what we intended to in the beginning. But in your book, actually, you come up with a different approach saying that you don't always have to come from the automated testing perspective. You can actually do refactoring without that. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, definitely. So I think testing can be super useful. I like to start saying I'm not against testing. Testing certainly has its places. When I'm against this, it seems that some people are fanatic about testing, thinking it's the only way to check code or thinking that if you have tests, then everything will work out. And neither of those are true. There are other ways to guarantee high quality of your code. And also things can fail even if you have tests. So I'm more just an advocate of having a more nuanced approach where you actually pick the quality tools that fit the job. Like many of the refactorings, I would claim most, if not all of the refactorings in my book are breaking down to atomic steps in a way that make it difficult for you to make mistakes while doing them. Of course, this means that we go a little bit slower while doing the refactorings. But that's to make up for the fact that we don't have the test to catch us if we slide by the side. So if you follow the steps very accurately and in small steps, you're minimizing the risk of error at each point in the process, which minimizes the overall error rate a lot. So I feel like there are other ways to guarantee that you can have high quality code. Particularly my thesis work at university was about provably correct software. 
Here I was actually sitting down and doing a proof that the computer could then check and verify that the program I'd written did the thing that I claimed that it did, which means testing was trivial. You know, you don't need to test something if you've proven it works. You don't even need to run it. I just knew that it worked. So I'm just saying there are so many different levels of security and risk, and it's all about risk management. What is your company's strategy for managing risk? Is it doing testing? That's cool. Is it doing like types that cannot go wrong? Then that's also cool. It's a business decision. What's your tolerance to risk? Ever since I wrote my thesis on provably correct software, I hope that the automatic cars, self-driving cars would be proven correct so that we knew they didn't kill people they didn't need to kill. Unfortunately, it's sort of gone the other direction doing machine learning where we can't even look at what it's thinking.